Today, I'm gonna to show you yet another way to stream live camera feeds in Home Assistant using the picture glance cards. We'll be using the RTSP2 web add-on along with the, the WebRTC integration that goes with it to bring in live feeds to those picture glance cards. So let's get started. Now there are mul multiple ways you can stream uh, camera feeds in Home Assistant. The original picture glance cards were laggy. Uh, they had a long startup time and in a lot of cases they got out of sync. And so they were not a good option to, dis to display uh, live RTSP feeds. Now I've showed you in the past a WebRTC add-on that's done through HACS. This is the Lex IT WebRTC add-on. It is a pretty feature rich add on that you have to install through HACS and then you add an integration that picks up your camera entities and it displays them specifically in a custom card. So you have to use the WebRTC card. And the WebRTC card makes use of the WebRTC uh, JavaScript and everything that goes along with it to make those streams work. And now with the add on that we're talking about today, there's this RTSP to web and RTSP to web RTC. And Alan Porter is working on this. You might remember Alan Porter from the Nest integration. Uh, he's using this for the Nest camera images or the Nest camera display. But you can see here that this is uh, an add-on that lets you convert your RTSP streams to web RTC, HLS or LLHLS or even mirror an, or as an RTSP stream. It's an add-on packaging of the existing project. So basically he's taking this and making it a core add-on in Home Assistant. And it's an improved version of the WebRTC, uh, RTSP to WebRTC project. It automatically converts your Home Assistant RTSP cameras to use WebRTC front end player that's already native to Home Assistant. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have cameras already configured in Home Assistant via some sort of camera integration. And there's a whole host of camera integrations that you can see here. I'll be using the generic camera because I'm streaming RTSP streams directly from my cameras. And this one right here fits the bill for what I'm trying to do. There's all of these other camera setups as well. But once you do that, you have those up and running. You need to have it working with a picture glance card. And that card needs to be set to live. Also note that low latency HTTP live streams is enabled by default in the stream component as of two or 2022.2 release of Home Assistant. That may give you enough latency or low enough latency that you don't need to do anything else past this point. Now I've tried that and I've run the low or eight, the LLHLS, I'll call it for short. I've run that on my Raspberry Pi 4 with five camera streams. And all of this, by the way, is going to be dependent on your cameras and your network and how much throughput you can push through your network. But anyway, I've run those five camera streams for a little bit and I don't see any issues with the LLHLS, which means I may be able to just run it directly that way without having to install the WebRTC component. The, the stream start up within about three to five seconds and before it was anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds and maybe even longer depending on the stream. So... Try it out. Try just putting the glance card or picture glance cards with your configured cameras and see if those work for you. And then you can stop. Keep watching the rest of my video because I would like you to do that anyway, but you could stop here and not do any more configuration. However, if you want even a little bit snappier uh, speed up with WebRTC using the uh, RTSP to web component or add on, we can go ahead and show you that now. So you've got your camera set up. You've got the picture glance cards going. You need to configure your add-on repo. Now it's not a repo that's core in one of Home Assistant's core repos. You need to add this repo or repository. And so I'm just gonna copy this link right here. And we're gonna go over to our Home Assistant instance here. Let me close that one. And we're gonna go over this Home Assistant instance and we're gonna go over to configuration add-ons. And we are going to click on the add-on store, store, which you didn't see, let me go back here. You wanna click on the add-on store over here. You're going to want to click on these three dots, click on repositories, and then paste the URL in here and then click on add. Now I've already added this. So you can see here, stream related home assistant add on repository. And I'm going to go down here. Now what's interesting to, and I will, I will tell you this, I don't understand this right now because it just occurred to me. 
I tried to add that repository again, it already exists. And what I find quite interesting about that is I just did a snapshot restore from a, a, um, a backup or snapshot I had from 22 hours ago before I started playing with any of this. So when you add a repo, and I'm sure I'm probably telling people already what you already know, when you add a repo and you do a snapshot restore of Home Assistant, a full restore, apparently it keeps those repos somewhere outside of the Home Assistant environment, so they're already there. So if you add something, do a snapshot restore, and you try to add it again, let me just show you what happens real quick. If you try to add it again, like I did, you'll get an error here, it's already here. I was surprised by that simply because I did a restore of a snapshot where this wasn't there. But anyway, it's there. Make sure you have this one. And if, if you do, you'll see the options for stream related Home Assistant add-on repositories. Now you have a choice of RTSP to web and you have RTSP to web RTC. Now in the instructions here, it says that you are going to be installing the uh, RTSP to web because it's preferred over the RTSP to web RTC, even though there are add-ons for both. So let me go back over there and we'll go ahead and click on that RTSP to web. And you want to make sure that you have your com uh, cameras already installed first, because when you do that, it will pick them up here and you won't have to worry about trying to add those later on. So let's go ahead and click on start now. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, we don't really need to do anything else. You can open the web UI here and I have no streams, uh, no viewers, no, no nothing here, but here's a kind of neat dashboard that you can use with this if you want to. None of your streams will show up and those are the camera streams until you actually go add the integration and you stream those cameras first or bring them up in a window because it doesn't know about them. Again, you don't really need this, but it is kind of a fun little interface to use. So anyway, we'll get out of this. We don't need that right now. I'm gonna go back over to Home Assistant now under configuration and I'm gonna to go to integrations and it should automatically discover your RTSP to web RTC, which I did here. I'll just click configure. And does it wanna use the built-in add-on? Yes, it does. And I've created the configuration for that. Now I've read some things from people where they have installed this and when they installed it, for whatever reason, they went to the integration page and it's asking for a URL. There's a number of reasons for that one. Maybe you tried to do the integration before you did the add-on. Maybe the add-on wasn't working right. Maybe something was out of order when you installed it. You can go add the integration back in. It's gonna ask you for a, a, um, a URL. So the URL that you wanna use is actually, uh, let me get back over to my add-ons page here. The URL you're gonna use for that is going to be, where is it at? The one that goes to the web UI. So right here, if it asks for a URL in the integration and you're running the add-on on your Home Assistant instance, this is what you want to use. Don't use the add-on URL or anything else. This is the one. So keep that in mind if you get a request for a URL. You shouldn't if you do it in the proper order. Okay, so that is now uh, up and running, the integration has been added. Now what we need to do, and I haven't created these picture glance cards yet because I wanted to show you the process of doing that. I'm gonna click on this. It's a blank dashboard. So I'm just gonna basically add in uh, a view. We'll just call this uh, test cameras. And I'll just give it a camera icon and leave everything else the same. Now I'm going to add a card. I'm going to add a number of cards here. So the first one is going to be, and this gets into the, I'm going to add a grade card, but we don't need to worry about all the grade card business. Just go with me on this. I'm going to give it two columns. I'm going to put two cameras there and I'm going to look for a glance card, picture glance. So here's a picture glance card. That's the one we need. And I'm going to remove the title because I don't want it on there. I'm going to remove the default image, although you can have a default image if you want. The camera entity is important, so I want to have a camera entity, and I know it's going to be this camera right here. The important part here is to set this to live, not auto. So we're going to select live. I'm going to leave aspect ratio, state entity, and all these other things alone. You can play with these other things based on the grid or on the glance card settings. You can read all about those if you want to, but it doesn't affect what we're doing right now in this video. 
I'm going to add a second card, another glance card. And if you already have these set up, you're, you're good to go. And I'll show you what's going to happen here in just a moment. All right. Well, let me get rid of this picture. There we go. Camera entity. This is going to be front porch. So I want to find that one. Okay. I'm going to go live on that one. Uh, get rid of the title. No aspect ratio changes. Get rid of these sensors. And I want to set this to not square for the grid card. I'm going to save it. And I am also going to change the type of, no, I should leave it like that. Let me see. Let me see what that does. Yep. I'm going to change it to sidebar so it's a bigger card. All right. So we're done with it. And now we have two cards. And sometimes I find that I need to do a, a kind of a refresh on the screen for it to pick up all the information or all this, all the, the, uh, the web stuff that's in cache or refresh the cache. So now I have two cards here two picture glance cards and they're showing the cameras and they're showing with no latency. Now I'm going to do a refresh here and you'll see how fast it loads up immediately, almost immediately these picture glance cards loads up, load up. And remember this was a problem before where the picture glance cards would take forever to spin up. Uh, and then they would be out of sync. You can almost see the time here. Now these cameras, the clocks are not necessarily exactly correct. They're not, they're synced to NTP, but I find that sometimes they don't update. So these second count counters may not be exact, but they're pretty darn close right now. If the cameras are synced with NTP right now, and this is valid, then we're almost exactly right on for both of these. Okay, how do I know if the integration is working? So if I click on one of these right here, in the standard picture glance card, you're gonna see a little section up here that says preload the stream. If that is not there, then you are using the web RTC uh, add-on or the RTSP to web add-on and the web RTC integration. And we are doing that right now. So, I mean, how much more simpler can it be to add that? And then if you want to add more cards, you can define a dashboard to add more cards here. You can take these and put them in your current dashboards, fit them in wherever you want to fit them in, and they're going to run really nicely and really well. Now, one other thing I will show you here is if we go over to the integration and I delete that integration, which is this one right here. Are you sure you want to delete it? You sure, sure am. Now I have the add-on configured or installed and running, but I do not have the integration running. And what that's going to do is if you go back over to this dashboard and you click on one of these, you're going to see here that it says preload stream. And now what it's using is it's running the low latency HLS, HTTP live stream. Now it is running what was released in 2022.2 of Home Assistant, which is the low latency stuff. If this works for you, and what I'm doing, by the way, is simulating the fact that I'm not using the WebRTC stuff at all. If this works for you, you don't need to install the WebRTC add-on. Now you can see there's a little bit of delay here. And it's all going to be dependent on your network and on the camera. So let me refresh that again. Sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's not. So you just have to play with whether or not the HLS stuff is, or the LL HLS stuff is going to work for you. And then if it does, just use it. My suggestion on that is to try the picture glance cards after upgrading to version 2022.2 of Home Assistant. Now, both of these cameras are Amcrest cameras, but I also run a couple of HIK visions and a real link camera, and they all work fine with HL or LLHLS and the WebRTC add-on. Super simple to set up. You can use it this way uh, with picture glance. You can use it with the WebRTC add-on. So let me make sure I covered all the rest of the stuff that goes on in this article right here. So we, we installed and started the add-on. We configured the integration. And then, and it was automatically discovered as it says here. And then if you aren't using Home Assistant OS or using this integration with external web server, you'll configure that URL instead, like I talked about. And let me just go back and do that. So we've removed the URL or removed the integration. If I go back and try to add that integration now, uh, right here, add integration, you can still click on the add integration button down here and you'll have to manually specify it. So I will search for WebRTC and you want to make sure you're using the RTSP to WebRC integration. 
it will have automatically discovered it the first time if you put the ad on first, but then it doesn't do it the second time. So as I mentioned before, you need to go over here and you need to specify this URL that opens up whenever you go to that add-on. So we'll put it in right here, submit it, and now it's created it and now we're back. And to prove that, let's go back to the dashboard. Let's fire up those cameras. And by the way, it's very fast again, right? Click on one. You notice there's no uh, preload stream here. So that means we're using the integration with WebRTC. I still like the WebRTC integration over low level HLS because, or low latency HLS because it just boots, it spins up super fast. I mean, it's just right there, right? It's just right there. So I really like it for that purpose. And so I may just continue to run it this way. And then I had, again, I had five cameras running in here with no problem. All right, so back over to some final thoughts on this page over here. Uh, remember, the integration may not work for your particular setup. Uh, the Home Assistant core team cannot support and troubleshoot user problems that are unrelated to the actual integration. That's a disclaimer. Uh, remember that every setup is potentially different. And so there's going to be issues that may need to be solved at an individual level and not a problem with the integration itself. And as I mentioned before, this stream negotiation process and the streaming itself can vary depending on your network setup and camera setup. There are specific audio and video codecs supported for uh, these and there's limitations. So we've got RTSP to web limitations. And if we look at that briefly, here are the limitations. Video codec supported H.264 all profile. So it's got to be an H.264 profile or video codec. And then audio supported codecs, none. This is where the custom web RTC shines over this one right now is because this doesn't support audio and the custom one has uh, a protocol that does support audio. So think about that when you're trying to do this kind of thing. So here's some technical details. You can read about WebRTC for on for uh, what the open standard for real-time communication is all about. Uh, so it's a the Home Assistant front end itself is a WebRTC client. This just means there's some JavaScript for in initiating a stream. And then it goes through and creates an offer. The integration is responsible for signaling, passing the offer and an, and an RTSP URL to the server, which we are, are using the add-on. And then the RTSP uh, server opens the URL, returns back an answer. The front end accepts the answer, establishes a peer connection. And establishing a peer connection may be a direct connection on the local network or using a variety of techniques to communicate through a NAT. The other thing to consider on this is there's no authentication on this right here. Now, if I refresh this, we do see that we have two streams that are automatically added to this because these streams uh, were seen by the integration and all of the stuff that we just read about communication between the add-on and RTSP and everything else created these streams. If you wanna look at what they are, they're right here. If you want, or the streams list here, they are. And if you want to do a multi-view within this environment, you can do this as well. You've got different options here, two by two, three by two, three by three, all the way up to seven by seven. And if you wanted to choose uh, another a stream, uh, you could choose one of these. If I had more cameras set up right now, uh, I would be able to select them and put them in this window. I do like this interface. It's kind of neat in the fact that, you know, you can set different grid sizes automatically, and then you can just add additional streams as you go along and add cameras. Uh, so that's a neat little interface for that. So picture glance cards, RTSP to web interface with its own kind of NVR view or, um, you know, surveillance view or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So in a nutshell, uh, let me make sure all my notes I talked about here. So we talked about, um, this is being another option. It may not be the right option for everybody. You may already have the custom WebRTC set up. In that case, if it's working fine for you, there's nothing to do here. This presents another option for viewing this stuff within the glance cards and also gives the ability to use a or a Home Assistant core provided add-on instead of something like an HACS. Um, so we talked about that. Uh, we talked about low-level HLS. You may be able to use that straight out of the box without doing any of this stuff. So just check a, check out that yourself. And what else do we have here? I will link the RTS P2Web page. I will link the uh, other stuff that I talked about today 
within Home Assistant. And one final thing I do want to talk about is let's talk about the stream component. The stream component is um, how this all works. And it's a pro provides a way to proxy live streams through Home Assistant. It's already, already built in. You don't have to do anything to run it if you're running a camera configuration that uses it. And the only thing I want to bring up here is the low level HLS stream and some caveats that go with it. It reduces the start time and delay for a stream, but it is strict timing and network requirements. It opens additional browser connections. So if you are running into browser limits, it's strongly recommended to use an HTTP2 proxy, such as Nginx or HA proxy, to take advantage of request pipelining. That's probably above the level of most people or above the level of what people want to deal with. So try the low level stuff again. I, I mentioned this three or four times in the video. Try it out, see if it works, but if it doesn't go back to the WebRTC. It is enabled by default on 2022.2 and above, but when not using HTTP2, the front end will revert back to regular HLF if too many streams are open. So if, if you end up with too many streams open, you lose the low latency version and then things will start to slow down on your camera feed loads and stuff like that. If you notice that, it's probably because you have too many streams open. You can adjust the LL HLS settings in configuration uh, YAML as it may perform better or worse depending on the values you set here. So here's an example, set it to true, which should be already, uh, part duration and segment duration uh, those are things you need to look up. I'm not going to cover in this video. I don't even know what they mean at this point. So there you go. Um, that's the stream component. All right. A lot of stuff I just talked about, a lot of blah, blah, blah today, but I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about the RTSP2 web integration and talk a little bit about it. Uh, if you have any questions, put those in the comments down below. Also, Discord is available. I have a channel called Frigate NVR. Blue Iris or whatever, you can talk in that channel or the general channel. By the way, if you try to direct message me on Discord, that's fine. I may not respond right away, but if you send it to me directly, then you don't get the um, benefit of having a bunch of eyes look at it if you do it one of the general channels. So start your, start your conversation in the general channels first and see if you get a response there. Or someone else may answer your question before I get to it. Blah, all that stuff, right? So thanks for watching the video. If you like it, hit that, hit that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. But if you do want to support me, that would be great. I support the channel, that is. Uh, hit the, um, the join button and consider becoming a channel member. And we'll see you on the next one.